Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, I'm Charlie and this is Rachel and we've been living in our self-built Iveco daily camper van. A few weeks ago we started filming our van tour video uh, and we finally finished editing that and putting it together for you, so here it is now. Hello and welcome to our front yard for the day. We thought that this would be a great place to give you our van tour. This is our sink. We wanted our sink to double as both a sink and a shower. We've got this veggie sprayer here that extends and all we need to do is just unhook that and pull it outside and then we've got our shower. This is connected up to a 12 volt pump and we've also got instant gas hot water which is a very nice treat after a cold surf. So underneath our sink is pretty much like almost like a standard household. Um, we've got all of our usual that we need in there, chopping board, nice big one. And all of our doors are held together by um, magnetic catches here. They work great. I really, really wanted to have a bin slider and bin sliders are really expensive. So Charlie made me Our very own bin slider which I think works a lot better than the household ones it's a lot bigger we've just got these little plastic tubs that we got from super cheap auto and really nice runners there and it works great we also needed somewhere to put our fire extinguisher and we thought outside of the bins pretty smart place to have it I didn't want to lose out on any bench space, so when we decided to put the sink here, we also decided to put a little hatch so that we can actually walk through. So that way, we can still get through to the front and I don't lose out on any bench space. Underneath here, we've got all of our uh, utilities. So we've got our gas bottle our instant gas hot water system and our 12 volt pump. Our gas bottle and our instant gas hot water system have been installed with the help of a professional gas fitter. We can access those from the outside of the vehicle. They're completely self-contained and isolated from the inside. This is our bulkhead. This is where we keep all of our adventure gear. We both really love our good sound, we love listening to music, so we wanted really good quality speakers, so we've got these 6x9s here uh, in the bulkhead, and yeah, the sound here is just great, so it's very enjoyable of an evening, just listening to music and chilling. This is our secondhand stove. Uh, we weren't actually going to take it, the person we bought the van off was just throwing it out and it looked like a heap of rubbish. It was covered in corrosion and rust and he just said to us if, if we decide we don't want to just, just chuck it so we decided to take it and I'm really glad we did. Um, I used some experimental gumption on here and it actually came up really really nice and we did a bit of research and found out it's actually quite an expensive stove. Uh, it was missing a knob and I had to contact quite a few companies to find a replacement and I was very lucky because it's now an obsolete product. So yeah, I had to boot out some little wasps that have built, built their clay nests in here. And we've got three gas burners here. We also have... We also have a grill, which is really handy. That is our really awesome free stove.
when we first got the van, it didn't have any windows. So Charlie had to cut great big holes in our van, which was horrible. <laughs> it was extremely noisy. Um, he used a metal blade on a jigsaw to do that. And he's done an amazing job. Um, we framed them with some hardwood pallets that we were able to salvage. And this is actually my favorite piece of timber in the whole van. I really enjoyed sending that back and I love the nail holes that are in it. I um, wanted to decorate the van with lots of really nice fabrics. Um, and these are actually out of my old van. I used to have a Toyota Hi-Ace and I salvaged all of these. Um, these are sarongs that I got nice and cheap for a bargain price. And I see a lot of um, vans have got piping, the white piping to fix their curtains and I don't like it. I, well, I mean, it's fine um, if you've got a white van, it looks great, but we've got timber everywhere and it would just be a bit of an eyesore. So I thought about it a lot and suddenly dawned on me to use these little pieces of dowel and uh, just these little these screw uh, hooks here. And we've got little end caps that are actually designed for tables and chair legs. Um, and it actually looks quite good and it functions really well. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. You need to have a piping top and bottom because if you parked on a hill, your curtain would just tend to fall out and it's not particularly useful then because people can see straight in, so. The other thing that's really important for us, being cold in our van in Australia is really not an issue. Uh, we found that being hot is more of an issue than anything. So it was really important for us to have the ability to have our windows open without getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. So having the screen is great. We still haven't really been able to test it out properly in summer, um, but that's this year and that's really exciting. I can't wait. We have a lot of vertical space in this van, which um, I wanted to really make use of. So we've put in some overhead cupboards, which we use for food storage. Um, also, this one's got an exhaust fan that goes outside and vents at the side of the van. Um, that is actually a computer fan. We found that when we looked at the stats, the fans that were uh, designed for RVs were really expensive and their performance wasn't as great in terms of um, their power usage and also moving, actually moving the air through. Whereas this is much more high performance and it was a lot cheaper, probably a fifth of the price of the RV fans. So we're really happy with that. It actually works. It's getting all sticky. So just like a normal household exhaust would. So we're really happy with that. Um, we used recycled pallets to build these overhead cupboards and so the framing is actually um, skirting that has been ripped down um, and the recycled timber is in between so we just really wanted it to have a rustic look. We're so happy with how that timber has turned out, there's so much detail in it that you would, you would not normally see in um, timber that you would just purchase from the hardware store. So that's absolutely beautiful. It gives it a lot more character. I wanted to add a bit of character and sort of break up the timber a bit by using lots of different coloured knobs, um, which we found in a little shop in Port Lincoln, South Australia. So, so I really wanted to have a shelf here um, in the kitchen, which Charlie did for me reluctantly because um, it was towards the end of the van field and I think he was a little bit over it. But I'm pretty sure he is happy as much as I am with the result. Um, it's really handy being able to have everything that we use, you know, quickly just, just there. So um, I really, really wanted a paper towel rack. I love having paper towel handy in a kitchen for spills. Um, so I saw this design in a house uh, that I was house sitting looking after and it's brilliant so easy um, and simple to just replace that dowel and pull that out so we've also got somewhere to hang and dry our tea towel 
and really important, somewhere for your keys. The keys live there. Um, we're notorious for losing keys and we haven't lost them unless Charlie forgets to put them back in their place. Uh, this is our feature wall and we, we only had a certain amount of um, hardwood timber. It was quite rare to come across that with pallets so I really wanted to do a feature wall with some of the hardwood that we found. There's a, there's a, there's a bit of a mix in here um, and so we kept all the stamps on some of the timber and there's a, a bit of a barrel mark and we have no idea what type of timber this is. Um, it's kind of dangerous. I tried to sand it and sand it to get it smooth but it just wants to cut you so we thought we'd put it up high so that we can't accidentally touch it and cut ourselves on it. But it looks amazing. And I really wanted to have great big drawers um, in this van so that it I think is better than a household kitchen. Um, there is a myth that you have to have plastic in a van. Um, when Charlie and I first moved into vans, we had plastic and you actually are fine with crockery um, as long as you've got lots of this uh, black sticky mat in between everything. It's absolutely no worries at all. So we still get to enjoy all of our nice crockery that we would normally have in a house. Uh, and these drawers are enormous. Um, I think it's really important to have good cookware. So, have our tiny little kettle with folding handles so that it fits. And, yeah, this just makes cooking an absolute pleasure. Having nice, big, expensive cookware. We've got all of our drawers latched with these Florentine bronze latches that we got from Bunnings. Um, and they're very effective. We've also got magnetic catches on them so that when we're parked in a situation like we are at the moment where there's a bit of a lean, we can still function in the kitchen and it will hold the drawers shut while I'm cooking. Uh, but then when we go for a drive, we just latch them again so we don't have to unlatch them every time. So this is Charlie's favorite drawer. The reason being, in his last van he had a chaotic drawer that was for absolutely everything, including all of his kitchen utensils and all of his uh, toiletries. But this is one magical drawer with only kitchen utensils, very nicely organised. I like everything to be neat and tidy so everything has a place um, and that's just a pleasure to use. And then. This drawer here is our fridge drawer. This is rated to 120 kilos and we've got an Evercool refrigerator that Charlie already had in his previous van and nothing particularly exciting in there. Lots of fruit and veg and our water filter so that we can have nice water that doesn't taste like chlorine. Um, We've also got, we needed to ventilate this fridge and so I thought it would be a great idea to not have a full um, fridge and I actually ended up seeing this design on another van after I sort of thought that it would be a good idea so that was just confirmation for us that it would work and we needed to have a vent on the front uh, to ventilate the fridge and I didn't want to have anything ugly so we actually um, found this in a local shop in Port Lincoln and it isn't a decoration, it's actually our vent, um, but it also looks nice. And this is our, a little bit of our, I guess our office and stationery drawer. And we had a little bit of space left over. So Charlie lovingly handcrafted this tiny little cupboard and that's where we keep the laptops. And a few other bits and pieces, but actually really comes in handy. So it's great having a place for everything. It helps our van stay nice and tidy. And this is the wardrobe. When Charlie did up the original plans, it was too small, so I made him redo it. And I wanted to have a full length mirror as well, so that I can actually just make sure I don't look too ridiculous before we go out. 
And it was also important for us to have hanging space, um, especially when we go to special events like weddings, which there's been a few of those lately. So these are my clothes, and these are my clothes, and those are Charlie's clothes. And this is my favorite drawer. It's my work drawer. Um, I've used these tidy drawers as well, just to keep it all nice and organized, um, because when you've got such a great big space, it's easy for everything to get lost. Just a few bits and pieces here. We made sure we put these drawers on rated runners um, so that we could load them up nice and heavy. So we, we really wanted to have our bed, um, I guess, east-west uh, so that we could save some space lengthways. And that's great for if we're parked on the side of the road, if we're at a gutter, our heads are actually uphill. Um, but it did give us a problem with our short boards, meaning that the bed was actually not quite wide enough to allow for the short boards to be stored underneath them. So we came up with this idea where the short boards actually come through right underneath um, the bedside table and the seat here. So I just thought, well, why not put, you know, those things over the top of the short boards and that way they're nice and concealed. Um, so this... We've got a little shelf in here uh, as our bedside table, so we've got toiletries and things that you might need in a hurry in the middle of the night in there. So um, we also have some toilet paper just in case. And the surfboards actually come right through under here. Uh, I didn't want any space to be wasted whatsoever, so. Uh, this chair here actually has um, our dirty washing and our laundry hamper underneath it. So that way we're not wasting any space at all. So this is our seating area. We did a lot of measuring um, of seats in houses and people's caravans and a lot of pretend sitting to try and work out whether or not uh, we had our dimensions right. And I think we got them pretty spot on. Um, so yeah, we've got two very solid storage boxes that we sit on top of. And uh, we had some foam cut um, and covered. And then I made some covers to suit our decor. This is actually a really effective area. A lot, it's, it's so comfortable and there's lots of room. So. Yeah, it's a great space for lounging in and relaxing in. And underneath our table here, we thought it would be good on, a good idea to have our inverter there. So if we're working on our laptops, we can have them charging uh, while we're working. And we've also got 12 volt power there as well, so we can have our phones charging. Behind me here, we've got this lovely bookshelf that Charlie made for me. I insisted on having a bookshelf. I love having my favourite books around me. So that's really cool. It gets used a lot. And um, yeah, I really wanted to have my crystals here. So those are actually stuck on with blue tack, which has come in handy um, in the van when you want to have something displayed but not falling every time you go for a drive. So blue tack, magical. When we first started planning this van, we wanted it to feel really spacious because at one point when we were living in Charlie's van we got caught out with three weeks of solid rain and it was a bit yuck. So we wanted this van to feel really spacious inside and but we also needed to balance that with the amount of storage space that we had available. So it was tricky sort of getting all of the heights right so I wanted the bed to be as high as we possibly could go. Uh, to get maximum storage space underneath it. We also had to make sure that when we put the long boards on the roof, we had enough head space and it has worked out really well. Um, so Charlie had to recess the walls so that we could fit a double mattress in comfortably. And um, it's lucky we're not tall people, um, but it is very comfortable for us. We also wanted to maximise uh, the storage space that we had on a vertical 
plane. So that's where we decided to have some overhead cupboards. Um, Charlie wanted them to be open so that we could easily access anything that's stored in them and rightly so. Uh, with the boards on the roof, if we'd had cupboard doors and things, we wouldn't actually be able to open them because the, the boards are in the way. And our storage above the wardrobe um, with all our towels and our linen, uh, we were originally going to have that enclosed and we actually realised that there was a fault in the design where we had to leave it open, otherwise with the boards here we wouldn't be able to open them. So yeah, we've just got spare blankets and um, I've got all of my sarongs and Turkish towels and things, uh, anything that I might want to quickly grab stored up uh, in the overhead cupboards. And we've also used, I have a lot of herbal teas um, and jars and things, so we've put all of those in the overhead cupboard there and I actually like the way that that looks, it's quite nice. I also uh, racked my brain about where to put the guitar. We definitely didn't want to leave it at home and um, this was pretty much the only available space we have left and it works just fine. Something that a lot of people have in their vans is they have a roof vent with a whirly gig on it to cool their van down. But the problem with that is that you need wind, you need uh, a breeze to actually cool, for it to actually work, for it to ventilate. And the other thing is that they do leak, they let rain in, so uh, it's not ideal. It's something that we definitely didn't want to have, we didn't want to cut holes into the roof. Um, so we just got this fan. It's great, it moves a lot of air around. We've got that and the uh, all of our screens on our windows and then also the ventilation fan over the oven to help move any and push any hot air through and push it out. So um, when summer comes, we'll let you know if it works. One of my favourite features of the van is our lighting. I really wanted our lighting to set a mood, uh, but it also had to be practical. And Charlie came up with the idea of having LED strip lighting inside of a profile. We both love the idea of um, LED strip lighting. And we decided to put it underneath all of our overhead uh, shelving. So, and I really love uh, the warm colored lighting. So it just, it sets a beautiful mood of an evening and it's really gentle on your eyes, but at the same time, it's very effective, very bright. And we've also got um, some down lights that are more of a white light um, and we have them on separate circuits so that we can have uh, the down lights on in the kitchen or in the bedroom, um, depending on what our needs are. And I do find that we tend to use all of our lights quite a bit. So yeah, really happy with how those turned out. Um, so we do have a really big van and the placement of the lights has, is very specifically thought out. So we've got lights above our bed We've got lights above the kitchen bench and kitchen table and then above the kitchen sink as well. So we're covered. We've got our lighting needs all covered. Uh, and we also have what we call our stealth lighting. So we've got a couple of little lanterns that we have on at night that are particularly dull uh, when we're getting ready to go to bed and if we don't want anyone to know that we're in here. We knew that we wanted to have our longboards inside on the roof. We've um, had boards on the roof in the past and they've been pretty much destroyed by sunlight so the plan was always to have our boards inside along the roof. We had to design a few things around that such as the lights and the overhead um, needed to be planned so that we could access them with the boards on the roof. We've got the attachments for the uh, ratchet straps going straight into the beams, the metal beams of the actual van itself. Uh, so they're really solid and because we were having these boards they take up a lot of room and they're kind of like the main feature in the middle of our roof I wanted it to look pretty so I kept all of our offcuts from the curtains that I made and sewed my really beautiful patchwork board bag um, just so that it would tie in with the rest of the van and look nice and we've actually come come to enjoy that on the roof more than when we're surfing and we don't have the boards on the roof. It looks a bit plain now, so it's worked out quite nicely. This is our shed. This is where we keep all of our recreational things, our tools. Um, so we've got all of our snorkeling gear and water containers in there. And this is all of our 
shortboards, and this is our surf drawer, which has got everything we need, wax, fins, um, duct tape, and all the things that we need for surfing in all of our wetsuits. So, again, it's all really organised. I have hooks for everything because it just keeps it all nice and tidy. It makes, makes life easy, makes it easy to find everything that you need. You can get to everything quickly and yeah it's just great really functional when we bought the van there was uh, quite a bit of rust um, in it that we weren't aware of and this was actually quite bad uh, at the back here just under this seal the whole thing was completely rusted through but we've had it professionally repaired uh, and they've done a really great job so I just try and keep this nice and tidy and we try and keep the wax on it and keep it uh, keep the salt off it as much as possible. We run all of our electronics using solar. So we've got two solar panels on the roof, both of which are 250 watts, and they feed into a 120 amp hour lithium battery. And we can access uh, the battery and our solar regulator uh, just under the mattress here. So there's a hatch there, which is one way of accessing it. Also, we can access it uh, from the back of the van, just in case we need to um, look at anything. But our regulator is actually Bluetooth as well, so we can see what's going on with our solar on our mobile phones using the app, and that's really handy. Um, we can always see how much charge we're getting um, and how effective the solar panels are at any given stage. So we can park accordingly um, to charge up our batteries. Our bench tops are acacia bench tops from Bunnings and we needed two bench tops to be able to do the whole kitchen and also to make our table. They are hardwood bench tops and we were a little bit worried about the weight of all this timber going into the van but it actually worked out quite well. We came under our GVM uh, so I'm really happy, that, really happy with these um, bench tops. All of the timber in the van has been oiled with tongue oil and um, it took us a while but we actually found 100% pure tongue oil online. Uh, we couldn't find it in any of the local hardware stores. It was always um, cut with lots of other chemicals and we couldn't actually find out what was in any of them but Charlie looked up the MSDS for all of those and we went, oh there's hardly any tongue oil in them. So, we ordered pure tongue oil and we got some citrus terpene and that was my job was to go around and oil and sand everything so it's all been oiled and uh, it actually makes the van smell really really beautiful. So there you have it. We hope you enjoyed our van tour. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.